hello guys so in this video this is what we are going to be creating today we are going to be creating this glitch effect and i know whenever you hear of glitch you think of displacement map and among so many other things you need to put in place for it to work but guess what we are not going to be using displacement map in this this is something that i find out by myself and it's quite easy you can even see lazy way of getting glitch done and actually it really looks cool so let's go This is a video project I'm working on. I'm actually done with this thing, but I feel like it needs some glitch effect on it. So this is what I'll be applying glitch effect to. We are not going to be creating the old scene, but the glitch overlay. If you want a tutorial that shows how I created this old scene from start to, to finish, please let me know in the comment section. All right, let's go. So the very first thing we want to do is create our composition. We'll go to this icon, create a composition. I'm going to name it glitch overlay and I'm going to make it two seconds long right and I'm going to click OK the next thing is to create a solid so I'll right click go to new create a solid name it fractal noise and it doesn't matter what color you're going to be using so I'm just going to change the color to this I'll click OK the next thing I need to do is to go to my effect and presets and then look for fractal noise. Fractal noise is under noise and grain. So I'll click and drag here. Fractal noise is actually used for quite a number of things, most especially for its luma properties. That means the bright value so that you can manipulate or change things in a way that makes it really look cool. That's what we are going to be using here. So the very first thing I would like to do in this settings is to change this to block because we need that blocky feel for this. Change the settings of the contrast. And let me increase this a lot. So let me increase it to about, let me use 2050. Okay. So you can see that it's, we can now see the black and white really clearly, but it's really, really look rough. And the reason why it's looking rough is because of the complexity. So I need to drop the complexity down to one. The next thing is to change with the bright values so that I can have more of the black pixels than the white. I will decrease the white value. So let me do minus eight, four, four. Okay, now this is really, really looking cool. The next thing I would like to do here is to apply animation to the evolution. So I'll take my time indicator to the first frame and I'll click this, then take my time indicator to the last part of the layer. And I'll make sure this is about, let's say it makes six circles. I click out and if I scroll over now, can you see what it's doing? So let me play this. All right, this actually looks really cool. In short, you can actually do something else with this but this is not where we are going so the length i like to do is to play with the transform properties because they're actually quite small so i would open this up and i'll go to the scale and check uniform scale so what i'll do is to increase it this way then increase this let me say this way so let's see what we have this is actually good but i think i won't be able to have so much control because what I really love to achieve is to have this in a different shape, not just square all through or this kind of rectangular shape all through. So what I would do is I'll probably just reduce this. Let me use, let's say 96 here. And I'll use 100 here. Then I'm going to apply an expression to scale width and scale height. I'm going to alt click here and I'll type in a wiggle expression and I'll make this 10 and 100. So 10 is the frequency, 100 is the amount. So if I uncheck this, and if I play, if I just scroll, can you see what's going on? Can you see when it's not more giving us that perfect square or rectangle or repeating the same shape? So let me alt click the scale height as well. And I'll, I'm going to apply the same wiggle expression and I'll make this eight. 100 and I'll click out. If I play this now, I see we have something more dynamic. 
The next thing I'd like to do is to scale this up. I've applied wiggle expression to the scale width and scale height. That means I can't have any control here. So what I'll do is to apply another effect. So I'll come in here and type in transform. Transform under distort folder. So I'll click and then I'll drop this. So under this now, I'll go to the scale and I'll drag it quite a lot. I think I'll use, let me put in a value 870, click out. So if I play this now, this is what I have. Let me change my resolution to full so you guys can see this clearly. Can you see it's looking really interesting? I think I'm really, really satisfied with what I have right now can work with this so i'll close this up now let me just close all of this up so that you know everything will be quite neat and i'll go back to my scene one so i'll look for where i can take a snapshot here because i actually want to use you know this frame to you know to work that glitch effect i think here it's fine this particular point is fine so what i'll do is to use my fx copilot plugin and I'll take a snapshot. I've done that, then I'll go to the gallery and I have something like this. So this is the snapshot I've taken. So I'll go back to my glitch effect and I'll drag and drop this here. And I'll, I can close this. You can see this is just a picture and I'll drag it on top of my fractal noise layer. So what I'll do, because I want this to be you know, appearing in all the bright values or all the white values. So I'll click on toggle switches and modes until I can use my track mat. So now I'll click this and I'll do Luma mat because we are dealing with the white values or bright value. I'll click on Luma mat. And when I do that, this is what I have. So let me change my background color in my composition settings back to black. I'll click OK. If I play this now, this is really what I have. You know, we're almost there. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my scene one then dragging my glitch overlay on top of the whole scene. And if I scroll back, this is what I have. So can you see, we have some really, really cool, interesting stuff here. We can go into the glitch overlay to increase the scale of this particular snapshot that I did. I'll come here, let me go to here, so yes, something like this, come here, then click on scale, then increase it quite a lot. And I can even click on this, go to my effect and presets and look for curves effect under color correction then drop it here and then i can just push this up a little bit so it's gonna be brighter so i uh, if i now go back to scene one now i have this now it's looking more interesting can you see this now it's looking really interesting if I play this now from the beginning, so let's render. Yeah, so this is what we have. So this is actually one way of you doing glitch. If you notice in the original video, we still have some other dynamic, like I literally have two glitch effects. This is the first glitch I need to create another so I can have something more dynamic. So I just want to show you another style. The next thing I'd like to do is to go to my glitch overlay and rename this to glitch overlay 01. And I'll click this then do ctrl d ctrl d is to duplicate then i have glitch zero two so i'll go into glitch zero two i'll just delete fractal noise because i'm not using fractal noise for this i'll be using something else then i'll, I'll change the scale back to one zero zero that's for the snapshots or for the frame that i captured the next thing i would like to do is to create an adjustment layer all so right click go to new create an adjustment layer and this is still trying to do track math so i'll just do no math go to my adjustment layer and apply the transform effect the one that we used before on that distort and drop it on top of the adjustment layer all right so i'm just confirming that this is an adjustment layer but what i would like to do here is to stack some effects to for me to get some really really cool results the very first thing i like to do is to increase the scale i'll do 148 and the next thing i like to do is to apply another effect well let me apply exposure it's under color correction and I'll apply it to the adjustment layer and then what i'll do is to increase the exposure quite a lot so let's do 2.76 
So what I would like to do is to create a mask on the adjustment layer. What I would take this rectangle to make sure I am selecting my adjustment layer and then I can draw something like this. So the next thing is for me is to duplicate this couple of times and to cut the layer to where I want it to only appear. I'll go to the very first frame. Maybe I'll skip a frame and I'll cut this and let me zoom in some more and I'll go maybe about five frames then cut this off and I'll duplicate this and I'll move this somewhere else. So I'll just move it further down maybe to about the seventh frame and I'll just reduce this to a frame. So I'm having something different. I'm going to be having something different here, but let me just duplicate everything to where I want them to be. So I'll take this to about 12 frame, extend this to 14 or let me just leave it as a frame and I'll duplicate this one more time, drag this to the 17th frame and leave it on the frame again. So I think this is really looking cool. Cool. so let me just drag this here so we can have something like this so it can just appear a couple of times on this particular frame what i would like to do is to click m for the mask click on max parts and just double click one of the handles and you can actually move it around and i'll move it to somewhere here even make it smaller you know just to have this really really cool stuff and just to make it look a, li a little bit more dynamic so i'll click out move to this next one and i'll click m for mask click on max parts double click this maybe drag this onto the center a little bit then drag it here then stretch this so more of a you know long really long rectangle over the height i'll just keep adjusting this so i think i'm satisfied with this then i'll go to the next one i'll click on m click on the max part then i'll take this let me do that again click on the max part double click this move this somewhere here so move this somewhere here then adjust accordingly so one other thing you can do is uh, you can actually go into each of this adjustment layer and then you can also change the scaling for each so i can make this more i can probably reduce this a little bit just to make it look more dynamic and i can in short maybe take one of these and go to effect and preset and look for fast box blur click on this and drop on top of this particular one and then you can just increase the blur a bunch for this particular one check repeat edge pixel and you can just you know quick keep stacking effect on this so if i scroll out and play this i have something like this can you see it's quite really dynamic really really fast so i can keep duplicating i have more to have you no know, more dynamic glitch but i feel like it might get too much at a certain point so i'll just highlight this whole thing then press you it's good to always rename your layers like vermeer to always say so i'm just gonna name this g let's say g01 which is glitch 01 so let me just quickly rename all of this so i'm gonna fast forward all these parts and this is what I have. Now we are not going to be using this snapshot just like we did in the glitch overlay 01. So what I'll do, I'll just, I'm just using this as a guide layer. So I'm just going to right click and click on guide layer. So it's not going to render out. It's not even going to show in the next composition. So what I'll do, I'll go back to my scene, scene 01, then drag in glitch overlay two on top. And then I'll just move this down. Let me zoom out. So I'll just move this down. I have something like this. Now, if I scroll over, I don't think anything is happening. Okay, so let me play this here from this point. Nothing is going on here. And that's because we are dealing with adjustment layer here, not just the ordinary layer. So I'll go back to scene one and I'll have to check continuous rasterization. So I'll click on this and immediately I do, I should start seeing some effects. Can you see? So we have that coming into play. So if I play this now, and the really cool thing about this particular glitch is it's actually procedural. You can place this on top of anything for you to get your result. Unlike this, where I actually took a snapshot, but this, you can take another footage entirely and then just place it on top and it's going to really, really procedural. Let me show you what I mean. I can take out the text and then if I play the glitch, you will not see the text. This is actually much more efficient than the first one. Yeah, I think we've come to the end of the tutorial. So let me just play this from the beginning for you. All right, let's see now. So yeah, this is how you can create your dynamic glitch.
without using displacement map or you know a lazy way of just achieving something really really cool like i said before if you want to know how i get to create this whole scene please let me know in the comment section and i will definitely consider that thank you so much please don't forget to like subscribe and share and i'll see you guys in the next video